Hi everyone and welcome to this demonstration where I will be walking you through how I present Dynamics 365 customer service. Knowing that everyone has their own way of doing things, this is how I have done it over the years and how I prefer to have it. So recently I've been blogging quite a bit about customer service and I have added all of the steps that I will be going through today to create the same solution that I have. And this ends up in a solution file, which I then also have hosted on a GitHub site that you can download. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to create a new video talking about the technicalities of whatever I've been doing. And what we go through today is the buildup of the application and how to demonstrate uh, customer service. So if we look at the application here, I'm just going to start at the dashboard. So for the dashboard here, this is where you see your overview of everything happening in customer service at the moment. And as you can see, this application here isn't that advanced, and there's a, a purpose and a reason for that. And it's because most things that I do, I like to keep them simple because I believe that that um, is easier for a customer to get going. If we start off too advanced, the system might never get used to its true purpose. But if we can get the sort of simple things going first, then we can advance and build onto the top of it. So what you see here in the basic dashboard is the overview of what you have assigned to you at the moment and general information about other things case related in the company. You know, typical things like a case mix, active cases by agent, etc., etc. General data. And then of course I have the accounts and the contacts and I have all of the cases active in the organization. And I've also included knowledge base articles, but I'll get back to this in a second, because what we are going to demonstrate today is the customer service scenario where I will be sending in an email. The email will then be received into Dynamics 365. CRM will then create a case automatically. An auto reply will be sent to the user saying we have uh, received your case, then we are going to assign the case to an agent, and then we are going to go through the process of the investigation, trying to solve the issue. So, we can start off with the first point here within the, in the demos, demonstration, and that would be sending the email in. So if I go to my email, and I start off by saying, customer service, All right, so my 3D printer will not work. Um, you might wonder why I'm just saying printer here in this case. Uh, well, there's a reason for that. And every, anyone demonstrating Dynamics 365 typically would know that, and I'm just going to click send here, typically would know that uh, printers is uh, one of the knowledge base articles within the system. So while I wait for an email reply here, I'm just going to go back to the CRM system and talk a little bit about why I also included the knowledge base articles. So the knowledge base articles are really quite uh, powerful because not only are they implemented within the CRM system for case handling, but you can also expose them to your web pages as, as knowledge, base art, knowledge base articles. So that's a really good reason why you should invest in parts of using this because you can reuse it different places. Uh, and typically here, if I go to the search here and I write printer, as you can see here, how to uh, perform maintenance on a 3D printer, or how to set up and configure. So I, I knew that these were in here as example data. That's why I also had the topic to be printer. And we will get back to why later. So what I'm waiting for right now is an email back from the system saying that your case has been created. There we go. Okay. So we have case three has been created. So that's just an information for us as a consumer that, okay, we have a case created in a ticket system. And that's good. These responses, I believe, are extremely important. 
because uh, otherwise you really have no idea if uh, the systems on the other side or the people on the other side are actually handling your case correctly. Okay, so if we go back into the CRM system now. So the way that I have now set it up is that we can now go to cases and of course we can see it here in the active cases but I also have a filter for the active cases team. So what happens is that whenever I send a case in, the case is then assigned to the team that is called customer service. So the reason for doing this, uh, quite simply, would be because I don't want to assign it to a single person because, I mean, if that person is not at work, I mean, you kind of want it to be an overall view. It's just like a queue. So from what I can see here, this has not been assigned to anyone. The owner here is customer service. I will take this and I will assign it to me personally. So I'm just going to assign and I will say I will take this case so it's then going to be removed from the common um, view and then I can find it within my case. So, I mean, if you were several people, you could just do the assigning from here and everyone could be looking into their active cases and follow what's going to happen there. And so, I will then open the problem with a printer. Okay, so loading up the case here, we have a lot of information and I'm going to take you through the view of what the case entity here is. So on top here, you have a process bar, which typically, typically could be used in a more complex case scenario where you have many steps and probably many people involved. And on the left side here, you have specific information about the case. So if you look at this, this is a case title. This is received from the email. The case number is set by an auto number sequence. And for the subject here, we could have said that this could be maybe, uh, I have an, a question about the product. For the customer and contact information here, this is automatically retrieved from the system because I, I can see that on the email that Thomas Sanser is a contact we already have in the system and therefore I'll automatically populate these things. And then the origin. So timeline here, the timeline is a chronological order of which the events have happened. So the first thing that happened was that I sent in an email saying my 3D printer won't work. Next, the system replied with, we have created an email, or sorry, we have created a case and your case number is for the following. And that was the response we did back to the customer. So on the left, no, I'm sorry, on the right side here, we have related information about the case. So in this case here, I'm seeing the related cases for the company Sunset OS. And this is a nice piece of information so we can maybe see that have they been entering a lot of the same cases recently or similar things, right? And on the bottom right we have a knowledge base article search. So if you look here into the problem with the printer, this is the same thing as we have the case title. So what we can here see is that I could easily go in and try to find out different things that could have been, re you know, knowledge base articles that we can reuse information that we can send to the customer. But I'll be showing you the two different ways that I could, uh, of responding. But the first one I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually respond directly to the email that the customer sent in. So this is the email. I have a problem with my printer, so I'm going to open this item. When I here choose to click to reply, what you will see is that I am sending from a queue because I want this to be a non-personal email. I want this to actually be the company's answer to the customer. And I have a title with the case number. And I have the super duper helper team uh, customer sig uh, service team signature uh, for the email. So I'm asking, could this solve your issue? In many cases in, in IT, we often have things that are screenshots and etc. So I'm just going to take a screenshot here and say, but maybe this was the issue. And I'm just going to, as easily as that, copy paste the image into the email. 
and click send. After it's sent, I'm just going to navigate back here to the case and we can see here again in the timeline the email that I sent to the customer. Another way to respond to the customer, and this is if we want, if we have the ability to use knowledge base articles and, and see the power with that. So if this is the one I think it is, okay, I can open this up just to verify. Oh yeah, this this seems to be the right one. Find the product name. You know, is it the carbon fiber 3D printer or something? If this is something I want to suggest to the customer, I can then directly send this knowledge base article to the customer from here. So by clicking this button, it will copy in the knowledge base article. I can say read the article. In this case, it will choose a subject based on the name of the article. So anyway, I'm going to take send here and send that off to the customer. So what we've done now is actually two different channels and two different ways of trying to solve an issue with the customer. And we can see all of the dialogue we've had uh, along the way in this, in this timeline. So what's going to happen now if I navigate over to the emails, we're going to see here, the first thing I have, I'm just going to refresh this, here we go. So this is the first email that I got saying that, okay, we have a problem with the printer. Uh, no, sorry, we have received your request problem with the printer and you have a case number. And then I answered, well, could this have been your issue? And we also have a knowledge base article that we sent. So we have sent the different pieces of information. I'm not saying that you're going to do both each time, I'm just showing the different ways to communicate. And normally, I mean, maybe this actually solved the issue. This was exactly what we needed. So I'm just going to respond back and say, you know what? Great. Thank you so much. Problem. Problem solved. Here we go. And of course, this could take a little while before it appears into the CRM system. And knowing quite well that being a part, of, I mean, uh, being an agent in the system, you might not always be looking into the cases. You have other things you're doing uh, during the day. So uh, I've also uh, added into this a um, uh, notification via email, uh, just informing that a new email has come into this case whenever it is received. So you don't actually have to follow this. Uh, all the time to see new cases that have come in. So I'm just going to give it a little time so that it registers the email and eventually we hopefully we will receive an email here with a notification saying that we have a new email for this case. And there we go. So as information here, we're just saying open CRM to see the updates on case number three. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So if, 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 if this were the case, I would be navigating to CRM. I would open up the My View, and there I see case number three. So I'm just going to open this case number three. And as you can see here, all right, so great. Thank you so much. Problem solved. So that is the answer from the customer and the only information that I need so I can now actually take this case and I can resolve it as complete. So I just click resolve case, resolution, okay, and resolve. So the case goes into then a historical case view. And so the good thing about this is that now not, no one can do any changes. So this is locked. And for historical purposes, I can always navigate back into the customer. So let's say someone opens the customer directly. So within the accounts, you can see I don't really have that much information, this being demo data. And the timeline here is interesting because now we'll just see what, since the last time I was in here, what have I missed? So I can see new posts, new activities, new emails, and I can filter them. I'm just saying I just want to see the new emails since last time. But I'm just going to close that out. And of course, I can see the contact, the Thomas Sanser contact that we have been using throughout this thing connected to the company and the recent cases that have been opened on the account. So 
with it, wherever I navigate now as a, as a agent, I'm always cap I mean, I can always see the data that we've been inputting into the system. And also a salesperson coming into the account now can easily see that, okay, we've had a case here. Maybe I want to check this out. Were they happy? Were they satisfied? Did they actually receive the help they needed? So in this case, I can see that by this email, all right, so the customer was happy. Great. Thank you so much. Problem solved. And this is where we start closing the loop. So sales are doing their job. Customer service is doing their job. And this is just one of the many ways of showing customer service, but this is the simple way that I prefer to do it. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I would love to get your feedback on the solution that I've provided in the community. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out. Uh, thank you so much.